This is Dr. John Stogner with the University of North Carolina at Charlotte presenting the video abstract for butane hash oil and dabbing, insights into use, amateur production techniques, and potential harm mitigation that's published in Substance Abuse and Rehabilitation. Dabs are the colloquial name for concentrated butane hash oil, a product that's produced using butane to extract THC from flower cannabis product. The process creates a wax-like substance that may be administered using a device like that one pictured on your left, referred to by users as an oil rig. Users will use a blowtorch to heat the titanium nail, place a dab on that nail, the dab will be vaporized, and then they will inhale the entire dab in one breath through the glass pipe. Our past research has indicated that users of dabs describe it as qualitatively different than flower cannabis use rather than simply being a stronger or more intense version of the substance. In addition, they describe behaviors not generally associated with marijuana, such as isolating themselves or hoarding their supply. Perhaps the greatest risk associated with butane hash oil comes from production rather than actual administration and usage. Butane extraction involves the passing of liquid butane through raw vegetation, creating a substance or solution that has both butane and THC. The amateur producers will attempt to purge that butane, which generally allows it to pool in enclosed spaces where they're doing their home production, such as garages, sheds, and vacant houses. That pooled butane will ignite if uh, meeting a spark or static electricity causing fires like the one seen on your right. The current article is a review of BHO research in order to present our overall understanding of dabbing as it stands today. We reviewed all peer-reviewed articles that were relevant regardless of publication date, though most articles on dabbing are published in the last five years. We identified 25 meaningful articles and identified three themes within those articles, that those being detailing BHO users, BHO production, and the risk related to using our study also includes a review of what information or perhaps misinformation is reaching the population through print media and YouTube. We identify a number of inaccuracies that may be corrected through public health education campaigns in the future. In conclusion, we find that amateur BHO production seems to be increasing, that there is as much we don't know about dabbing as that we do know, and we recommend a harm reduction approach using public health education campaigns.